You know what's funny? The fact that when I go out, I put makeup on and make an effort to look nice. And yet for these behind the scenes author life vlogs, I tend to not even bother with makeup or my hair or <laughs> anything about my appearance. And yet, logically, statistically, more people are watching this vlog than will see me when I go out to shop. Bruh. Maybe it's just because you guys are predisposed to like me. <gasps> so I don't feel the need for social validation. Focus, Abby. I'm gonna be totally honest right now. Opening up a book that you've written a long time ago that needs to be totally revised and edited and rewritten. It feels like walking into a house that needs a total gut job. Like there's nothing about it that can stay except maybe the floors that will be like reclaimed wood for your dining room table. It is overwhelming. It is daunting. It takes a very particular kind of person who can walk into a house and see the potential in it and not just run away screaming. And that is what I feel a good writer has that quality to walk into a messy manuscript and not run away screaming, but say to yourself, I can fix this. And when I'm done, you're gonna love it. <laughs> and today is day one demo day. Don't you feel like I'm crying? Don't you feel like I'm crying? Well, here I am, oh honey. Oh, come on, you cry to me. When you're all alone in your lonely room, and there's nothing. The smell of her perfume. I don't you feel like a cry? Boom. It is done and printed, and I didn't actually print the whole thing because I ran out of paper. But this is partially rewritten, so I actually have to go through and figure out what parts need rewriting and what parts are okay. Because I think a lot of it's probably okay in the beginning, but I also had some ideas the other day for a new beginning, which I wrote on this, that needs to be done. And I also wrote and printed a questionnaire for myself. So this is something that I do every time I revise a manuscript, especially a manuscript that I haven't touched in a long time. I like to ask myself about the strengths and weaknesses of the story so that I kind of prepare myself for <laughs> the job ahead without scaring myself. <laughs> so I asked myself first, what do I love about this story? Why does this story matter to me? What are the problem areas that I know I'm going to encounter? What are the strong points of the story? And how do I want my characters to change throughout the story? So I keep this on hand while I am revising because it's important <laughs> for a few reasons. First and foremost, you don't wanna go into revisions, just like, <laughs> I'm here to hack my way through this, brutally kill my darlings, and what will you be left with? You will be left with a mess, okay? So you don't want that. You want to have a clear focus on what's good, what needs to go, what needs changing, what are the strong points, what are the weaknesses, how can you make this work so that your vision works? Okay, that's not how we redo a house. That's not how you see these professionals go into a gut job house, demolish everything. They have a plan, okay? It's not just, I'm gonna go in and just break stuff and see what happens. That's a recipe for disaster. The other thing I printed was just some notes um, for the revision, which they're kind of messy. Highlighters are my best friend during this process. I want to have like a color key, which is something that I do a lot when I'm revising. 
I like these colors. My autofocus isn't working. Why? Let's go with these guys. I have a feeling that no matter how organized I try to be with this manuscript, it is going to be a total mess when I'm done, and that is scary. What I really wanna do is make notes on what needs to be written, or rewritten, rather, and what needs to just be like embellished. I usually do more colors during the like line editing process because there's just more going on. Blue will be signifying anything that needs like rewriting. Orange will be for things that I like but they have to move. Um, so that will be like relocating bits. The purple will be anything that needs to be like embellished. Blue is rewrite, orange is relocate, and purple is embellish. This is not a grammar edit. This is not an edit to catch sentence structure or spelling or weak words or passive voice or any of that that is coming later. These are my revisions. So let's get started. Tomorrow, where are you going? Do you have some room for me? Night is falling and the dawn is calling. I'll have a new day if she'll have me. Hey, tomorrow, I can't show you nothing. You've seen it all. Death by your door So many times I Said I've been changing Then stepped into patterns Of what's happened before Cause I've been wasted And I've overtasted All the things That life gave to me And I've been trusted Busted, and I've been taken by those close to me. Hey, tomorrow, you've got to believe that I'm through wasting what's left of me. The night is falling, and the dawn is calling. She'll have me. It's about to die anyway. <laughs> so I just finished filming an episode of Ask Abby, which I'm really excited to post. Great questions came in this month, and uh, by the time you watch this, that video will have already gone up. So, <laughs> but anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. I literally just finished writing my last chapter of the co-write project that I'm doing with my sister. The ball is in Kate's court now and she has I think one more chapter left to write and then we're done with this first draft of this first book and it's going to be a series so the fun never ends but my battery is dying. Hold on. Ugh. Okay. Is that better? It was so close to dying when I was filming that video and my task cam was like also running out of juice like the last little sliver of battery and I'm like <sighs> What was I talking about? So, the book. <laughs> the book is part of a series, so we're gonna roll right into book two. We're gonna start writing the first draft of book two, and I'm really excited to be working on this series like this and not taking a break or anything because I this is my first time writing a series, so I'm used to staying on a project until it's done, and it's really cool to have this book constantly this, this story, this series constantly in the works and I'm really excited to move forward on the editing process and getting it out to you guys. So I obviously don't know when that's gonna be, but we're working on it. <laughs> A lot of progress will definitely be made this year. It's so much more fun to be working on a project with 
another writer, especially a writer who you love their writing and you get along with them really well and your best friends and your sisters and your soulmates and you finish each other's sentences, <laughs> literally. So I guess I should be glad that I don't have like anything immediately to steal my attention and make me just want to forget everything else and write all day because as you know, I am working on revising the other manuscript and I need to really dig into that. The other thing that has been different lately in my life is the fact that I am not planning as intensely and I'm not pressuring myself with deadlines this year and that is terrifying. <laughs> it's funny, it's like if I give myself deadlines and timelines and intense schedules to follow, I feel more comfortable and more, I don't know, confident. <laughs> and, and yet, if I do that, I also feel stressed out and reach a level of burnout that makes me want to quit everything. <laughs> I realized as I was setting goals that I didn't want to pressure myself with timelines. <laughs> Like, I just don't want to do it. I just don't. I want to do everything on this list. I want to do all the things that I wrote down as my goals for 2022, but I don't want to put all this pressure on myself. I don't want to take the joy out of the journey because I was reflecting on my past year and thinking about how I really can't remember most of it. That's just been something that I've been thinking about a lot is, uh, if I'm working all the time, then when do I actually have time to enjoy the fact that I have my dream job? And what would happen if I didn't pressure myself with deadlines, but I just worked forward and stayed present and enjoyed the journey, still working hard, still having discipline, but not pressuring myself with so many expectations. So yeah, I'm working towards my goals, but I'm also taking time to live more and write more and just find more joy. And I think this year will be better because of it. That being said, let's go do something fun. One, two, three, two, three. like you think everyone is watching you. <laughs> I wouldn't say that January was like a super productive month, but it was fun. And I tried new things and I got out more. I lived more. I 
didn't spend as much time staring at a screen, which is something that I have been trying forever to accomplish. So I guess you could consider that an accomplishment. Didn't think about it like that. But as far as like building healthy habits, okay, one of the most unhealthy things that I do constantly that I kind of have to do for my work is spend a lot of time sitting inside staring at a computer screen. So I've been trying to cut that down as much as possible. I was experiencing a lot of headaches, a lot of tension headaches, a lot of eye strain, and I've kind of been adapting my routine because of that. I've been writing a lot more longhand, so <laughs> I got some new notebooks and I've been using those in a more organized fashion to write down plot and character notes and even some of my manuscripts, my works in progress. So that's something I have not done since I was like a really little kid <laughs> was the last time that I wrote a manuscript longhand. So it's been different, but I figure like writers have been doing this for thousands of years. <laughs> so sometimes it actually comes out better depending on what you're working on. I find in my experience that sometimes giving myself more time to think actually results in more mindful writing. I think I could really get used to it. So I'm, I'm doing that a lot more just to save my eyes. Like literally, this is all just about eye strain and, and the realities of working on a device all day. I've definitely felt better lately not being on the computer so much. So I think it's working. Yay! And before y'all comment and say that I just need glasses or something, first of all, I have these guys, which are my blue blocking glasses that look cute. And I think they work pretty well, but my mom recommended to me a pair of like super heavy duty gamer glasses and they're somewhere else. I don't know where they are, but they are like super orange and they change the way that colors look when you have them on. So I can't use them for any like color sensitive things like photo editing or video editing, but I try to use them for everything else. And I find that they do help eye strain a lot because they block the blue light. Ultimately what helps me the most is working in shorter sprints and taking more breaks, spending more time outside, working outside whenever I can, and writing in notebooks more <laughs> than writing on screens. So that has been my lifestyle change lately, and it has been working well for me. It's really actually been changing my life. So I'd recommend it. If anybody out there is experiencing something similar, maybe you needed to hear this, maybe not. Maybe you're like, Abby, move on. And because I've been experiencing so much eye strain lately, this video is sponsored by nobody. <laughs> Tricked ya. Didn't it feel like I was leading up to a sponsorship just then? See, it's sad that that's what we think of now when we watch anybody's content. I feel like I'm one of the only people who doesn't do this. <laughs> no, you know who this video is really sponsored by? It's sponsored by you guys because you're the ones who support me directly so that I don't have to interrupt my vlogs and videos with annoying advertisements for companies and brands that I don't care about and that you don't care about and it's just a waste of everybody's time. <laughs> Sorry, at reply, all the brands who email me, no. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound rude right now. <laughs> I probably don't have to try, it just comes natural. But the reason I don't do sponsorships is because I like to give you guys uninterrupted content, the highest quality content that I can possibly make. So that's why I don't do sponsorships. And that is why it is super important for you to support me. The best way to do that is to click the subscribe button below this video. Another great way to support my content is to hit the join button below this video and you can get access to perks like asking questions for Ask Abby, which is a Q&A show that I do every month on my channel, or you can visit my Patreon at patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. I also have a ton of exclusive content over there for you guys and every single 
patron, every single supporter in this channel. You guys mean so much to me and you are the reason that I can do what I do and have my dream job and I cannot even express my gratitude for that. Thank you guys so much for being here, for watching my channel, for supporting me. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being in the community. Okay. That's it for me. Comment below this video and tell me what has been going on in your writing life lately. What are you working on at the moment? Are you writing anything new, publishing any, anything new? I would love to hear all about it. Update me in the comments below. I am going to continue revising that manuscript we talked about earlier and outlining and brainstorming the next book in the co-write series that I'm writing with Kate. Lots of exciting things yet to come. I can't wait. 2022 is gonna be great. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Shh.